Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters, especially the path of knowledge. And we also conduct the activities of the path of knowledge program. So this is very useful for those who are in the program or those who want to join the program. All questions are most welcome. Graham is asking, how should I deal with my desire to be with the Guru? Just like you deal with all the desires, know that they are simply illusory activity of the mind. If it is really important, it will happen automatically. If it is not important, simply watch this activity coming and going. Be in awareness. This is the solution for all the desires. Vandita is asking, is Muji saying, bring your heart to your mind, similar to the experience of oneness? Because the heart here means the experiencer. So it means know the experiencer. Mind means knowledge, intellect. So the word heart comes from the terminology of Raman Mahashi. He called the experiencer or the Atman as the rhythm or heart. And the mind is simply that which thinks. So think about the experiencer, which means be in awareness, self-inquiry. Sanjay has a question. Is it right to infer that term of love as used in spiritual context is synonymous to experiencing or oneness? Yes. The definition of love is to become one when there is there are no differences. So at the highest level, everything is one and that is same as love. There is a question from Satya that what does spiritual independence mean? I never heard about this thing. We can talk about the independence of the person, but uh, that which is spiritual is already independent. It is already free. So the person can be freed from ignorance. That much is possible. That much independence is possible. Probably when you become free from ignorance, that will be your independence. You are not dependent on others to know what is true, what is not. Muni has a question. There are tests in a Hindi satsang on a continuous basis, but hardly any in English. Are less people joining the English POK? Is English not a preferred language? Yes, very few people join the English program. Even those who know English, they join the Hindi program. If they know two languages, they prefer the Hindi one. So that is why we have more people there. And in English, we have few people, but not much. And I've seen that many people do not appear for exams. They listen to all the videos, but uh, they do not complete the third step. Everybody is afraid of exams. When he's saying it needs more marketing, so many people would benefit. They just do not know it exists. Yes, we are trying. We are trying to reach more people. And uh, the status of the Marathi program is also the same. So far, very few people have joined it and almost nobody is progressing in that program. It looks like that these people are not aware that there are programs like this. So we are trying a few things. In few, probably six or seven months, there will be more people in the program. Sandesh has a question. In last satsang, you told us that you have some surprise for us. What was that about? We are launching new programs, new apps, new services. So that is what is the surprise. Nothing special from the point of view of those who are already in the program. Same services in many forms. So just like Muni said, we need little bit marketing. So we are launching more services. Sanjay is saying, can test conducted on one to one basis? No, that is not the recommendation. It has to be transparent. This whole program is transparent. What you are writing is visible. The certificates are visible to everybody. Even without logging in, they are visible. And the tests, they are published online. That is because we want to keep the transparency, fairness. And secondly, these questions that are asked in the test, they are very much beneficial for everybody else. Many people benefit from these answers. And if there is no fear, uh, the student will think that nobody is listening to me except the one who is taking the exam. So they will be careless. They will think that if I fail, I'll simply ask 
the teacher again to take the test nobody will come to know so just like every other exam this is also public and transparent there is no point in a personal exam that i keep taking every day the, your personal interaction with me is your exam sapna is asking why knowledge or gyan in some situations becomes very difficult to apply it totally depends on the situations where are you trying to apply it usually the truth is completely useless in your illusion in the illusion only the knowledge of the illusion will work not the truth so let me know where you are trying to apply it probably at the wrong place the use of knowledge is in liberation from the illusion that is the application there are effects of knowledge and those effects like the peace the bliss higher intelligence evolution they can have a little bit of beneficial effect on the person but if you try to apply the the knowledge that i am not a human i am not a person and try applying that in case of your family or your business and uh, it is impossible not only difficult there you must behave like a human there you should be a person and there is no other choice also how can you behave as a emptiness or experiencer it has no behavior at all so the knowledge cannot be applied in the world it can be applied to get rid of the world sandesh is asking what are your thoughts on upanishads how one can comprehend the true lessons from it that is simply a summary of the knowledge that is embedded in the vedic literature that are upanishads and in my opinion it is very compressed encrypted difficult to understand very old language but they are very good source and how to comprehend it how to learn it the best way is to approach a guru who knows what is written there who has actually experienced it it will not be possible to understand it if you read it even if you have a good knowledge of sanskrit you will understand nothing it is same as the case when you have a good knowledge of english but you are given a book of philosophy or mathematics or physics you won't be able to understand a single line it will take many years of study under a teacher to comprehend what is written in that book of physics or biology you will understand a few words here and there but you won't become a student of that subject simply by reading so systematic study under a teacher is the only way there is no other way there is no other shortcut on the path of knowledge this is a shortcut if you start reading things especially the old books it will take you many many years you sit with the guru and it will take only one hour so what people think is a shortcut i'll buy a book and get all the knowledge is actually shortcut to failure kanika has a question what can help to spread knowledge to as many people as possible we do not want many people we want only th- those who are searching so become available to those who are searching and how how to do that there are many ways like uh, start publishing your own channels your own groups and those who are interested they will come and if one person is benefited they will go and tell somebody else and so on so this is the only way there are other ways but we do not employ those things when you advertise that i have this knowledge i have that knowledge i can give you this i can give you that then a lot of deluded people start coming and they will waste your time so although we want more people to benefit but we do not want too many just like you know the working of the guru field they do not allow advertisement or manipulation of any kind so service that is all they want they want you to simply serve then it is the job of the guru field to send the proper person to you so this is not our responsibility fortunately to find the right person this is the responsibility of the guru field they keep sending the people and uh, the good thing is these kind of people are very very less very few so our job is very easy actually there are other gurus who can employ different kind of method they are called the public guru you can say popular gurus so their job is not to spread knowledge their job is to spread awareness of the spirituality usually these people are so busy that nobody can even talk to them nobody can ask uh, the questions 
and they can ask the questions but there is a very big fees for that a lot of money must be spent to even talk to these people so what will happen if you become popular same thing will happen nobody will benefit so everybody has their own methods and uh, their own missions our mission is to pick those who are ready and to leave those who are not ready even after giving the knowledge i find that they are not ready for it so we leave them because when when the time is right they will progress sweet is asking was the truth becomes evident is there the need of learning any other ritualistic practices totally depends on uh, your desire if you want to do something and it involves some kind of practice then yes learn it use it if you are trying to do the ritualistic practice to know the truth then it will be useless practice but if you are trying to achieve something else then you should learn it first properly do it under the guidance of the guru what is the ultimate goal of the guru feel and why i don't know why but their goal is spreading of knowledge and light why are they doing it it is a play actually if you really want to know the reason it is just like a play they are playing with it so you can ask the same question to somebody who climbs mountain what is your ultimate goal and why so they will say my goal is to climb the mountain and why because it is a play same thing they are players sandesh is asking i have ex- explained lucid dreaming a lot of time is that any spiritual experience or it's just a dream it is just a dream it simply means that there is a high amount of awareness in that dream there are no experiences that you can say are spiritual there is no material experience and there is no spiritual experience whatever you are witnessing right now is also spiritual there is only one kind of experience and that experience is completely fabricated illusion so everything is actually an illusion and if you want you can call it spiritual illusion because it is you only you are the illusion also and you are the witness of the illusion also chit has a question when everything is one what is the point of this whole drama point means you are asking a reason and there is no reason the drama means play or leela and you can say the reason is to play the dr- the reason of the drama is to enjoy the drama enjoyment entertainment but uh, that is not very accurate answer the answer is in this existence there are no reasons no causes no purpose it is purely existing then the human mind creates all the reasons purposes and so on because of its limited intelligence it wants to know why it is there but in reality everything simply is so different people are given different answers depending on their ability to grasp so the highest answer is this that the reasons causes are simply illusory but if they cannot understand it then something else is told like it is a play if that is not also graspable then they say to get the happiness to become happy bliss and some people cannot understand that also so they are told something else so totally depends on how much progress you have made you will get different answers chit is asking can we really grasp reality as it is because even to know that you need to be there and that's maybe your individual point of view yes it is possible to grasp the reality and uh, that which is trying to grasp it is seen as not there when the i disappears the reality appears when the individual point of view disappears the universal point of view appears which was all, always there is it was hidden behind this ignorance that i need to know when this i is gone and the need to know is gone whatever is will be shown it shines it is already here it is hidden behind your ignorance on the path of knowledge everything is known all the questions are destroyed completely he is saying i think you mean it's not about point of view it's about the viewer the one who is seeing no i don't mean that your question was can we really grasp the reality and the answer is yes it is possible to know it completely with complete evidence 
Pranam. I have no doubt, kind of doubt, but um, so you said that the desire is there, uh, the learning of other ritualistic things will happen, right? So, but once the truth uh, becomes part of the individual, then the desires also fade away a lot. So is it like the necessary like it? Then it is done or it is known or what? Uh, desires point out to the mind, but the mind stops bringing in desires. The truth is a part of that religion, whatever, right? Whatever. How do we do that? I don't know what you're asking. Probably you're asking that uh, when the desires come and you become aware of it, they stop, they go away. How to explain that? Are you asking this? No, my question, only question was uh, like, once the truth is known, is there a need of learning any of these things? Right? Like other kind of learning, which involves a practice of a, in a rich way. So, or the fulfillment of some kind of uh, goal or desire that arises. So, against that, uh, understanding, my next question is that once the truth is um, known or becomes a part of that individual life, the desires no play in much of importance because it is always uh, seen in the perspective of the truth, then it just fades away. So, that, that's where my like, so in that scenario, where is the, what, what's the point of learning any religious things that might be involved in some kind of sadhana, other kind of sadhana? Yes, if the desires, if there is a desire initially to learn something, to do something, and it goes away, fades away, then probably it's not important. Then it is, there is no need to do it. It came and it went away. That means it was simply an impulse that was probably implanted. It was not yours. You heard it somewhere, somebody told you. Now there is a momentary desire. But if the desire remains, it keeps coming again and again, then probably it is necessary now. It is important. So in that case, you should do it. Learn that ritual, do the practice properly. See what happens to the desire. Is there any fulfillment in that or you get bored of it? So your bliss should be the deciding factor. Are you enjoying it? Are you happy about doing it? That should be the deciding factor. What should I do with that desire you are asking? If it goes away, no problem at all. But if it stays, that means we should check whether it is making me happy or not, whether it is beneficial for others or not. And only then it should be done. Hopefully that is what you are asking. Yeah, kind of, but I'm not talking about my individual uh, desire or anything. Like, if I, even if I talk about uh, this individual person, maybe, the way it was before understanding this uh, truth, before the understanding of this truth um, happened, it was very different, right? My personality, my behavior, everything was very different. And once after an understanding of this absolute truth and uh, being abiding in it, in your awareness and everything, it has completely changed. And the, as long as the everyday requirements are fulfilled, it's just okay for it, you know. And so that's that's where my question arises. Like after knowing this uh, truth, there is such a tremendous satisfaction and happiness. Whatever may be around, going on, it does not matter. That uh, that happiness will fade away. In in that situation, the desire of wanting anything more than whatever it is, how do you feel? Probably it's it's for me. So what I can understand or feel is that the more I be in, in it or the practice of it, it just happens, and there's no more practice or anything that needs to be done for being in the awareness or being in the truth. So it just keeps on increasing every every moment, every day. You so that situation where is the necessity of learning anything else or doing anything else. Yes, your progress is good, so there is no need to learn anything new. Continue in the awareness. Nothing more to do. You're already reaping so the that's fruits. Just, that's what my question was. <laughs> yes.
totally useless practices so you are already beyond practices now there is no need to do anything else yeah that, that is what uh, also that comes to my mind like uh, once any individual can understand through the by grace the guru that understand comes so deep that anything else every other thing just follows it isn't it that way guru it has to be that way for anyone who understands the nature of this gift Doesn't everything just happens by itself after that? Yes, your progress is good, so there is no need to learn anything new. Continue in the awareness. Nothing more to do. You're already reaping so the that's fruits. Just, that's what my question was. <laughs> yes, totally useless practices. So you are already beyond practices now. There is no need to do anything else. Yeah, that, that is what uh, also that comes to my mind. Like uh, once. any individual can understand through the by grace the guru that understand comes so deep that anything else every other thing just follows it isn't it that way guru it has to be that way for anyone who understand the nature of this gift then everything just happens by itself after that yes ideally it should happen like this for everybody that they will keep dropping dropping everything that is unnecessary will be dropped continuously probably it happened for you quickly some people are still trying to drop it and ultimately everybody leaves empty handed com- completely empty that stops the human birth also so this is the effect of knowledge purity purification is the effect it should happen for everybody they will take their time depending on how much load they have karmic load so it is very good that you do not have anything now nothing left and don't worry about the small desires that come there is nothing harmful in that simply watching I awareness it's not bothering whether comes or goes it's just a... yes just mental activity simply observe it it's nothing to to be done if it is very important it will happen automatically nobody is there to do it exactly hmm. nobody is the doer okay we'll take another question Vikas is saying, are our Indian gods like Kali, Rudra, Bhairav are just creative ways that our ancestors depicted as the inner states of awareness, in that they are pictorial representations of emotions, states, example, anger, violence? No, no, no. They are personification of the powers of the universe. Rudra is nothing but Shiv only, which you are. So your own form, Bhairav, same. Kali. energy or you can say vibration in our terminology which is also you so you are pictured in many ways because you have taken many forms so where do you find this kind of deities in the tantric field these all names are coming from the tantric field and whenever they assign a name to something it is always some kind of power they have identified this kind of energy this kind of activity in the mind and they assign it a name so rudra actually means fierce it does not mean mean angry and kali does not mean violence it means the survival tendencies that is found in every creature so this is a big subject and uh, totally beyond path of knowledge by beyond i mean not covered in the path of knowledge chitta is saying i am assuming you will transcend your existing identity to universal identity your existing identity is already an illusion so it disappears and the universal identity means nothing it is completely empty of any identities so some people will say that my identity will shift from the body to something big brahman experiencer no it will be gone there is no transcending you are already that simply remove your ignorance there is no need to transcend to anything do you need to change your identities to from this to that all identities are false and the belief that i am down here i need to transcend somewhere is simply ignorance you are already the ultimate you are already the highest and it has no identity at all it cannot be identified as one thing so there is a lot of ignorance and i recommend going systematically find a guru start studying so i think not many questions and we can end today's satsang here hopefully everybody got their answers and keep progressing and i'll see you next time